What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV and welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learn, the show where we go through all the major talking points of the last England game while we're on the road to the World Cup final. Um, however far England making that journey, we will see, but they haven't been eliminated just yet. It was a very comprehensive 3 0 win over Wales. Comprehensive second half performance, if we're being realistic. That first half was like watching paint dry. But we're going to delve into all the major talking points. Um, if you guys agree or disagree with anything that we say, let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV as well. We're going to be discussing all the major points of the England versus Wales game. Um, we might even talk about Christian Pulisic a bit towards the end because I feel like it would be a bit unfair on us as a Chelsea channel to just talk about the England game in general and just completely ignore how good Christian Pulisic has looked during this World Cup. So we will delve into that towards the end of the video. But before that, we're going to discuss the England game, all the major talking points. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything that we say down in the comment section below. And yeah, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button as well because there will be plenty of content coming out during this World Cup, plenty of transfer news, plenty of player watches. And after that, we go straight back to Chelsea. Yay. Yay. I can't wait for that. But yeah, big up everybody. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button and let's get into it. Because England 3, Wales 0. Very confident result. But in terms of performance, it was two different England sides again. And I feel like it's it becomes very apparent that England could be so much better if we just take, if we just take our foot off the brake pedal a little bit. Because... This was going to be my first main talking point, but um, I'll get into it after I discuss the game because the first half was like watching paint dry. But the second half, we came out with a bit more of an attacking impetus. We came out with a little bit more freedom. Um, we changed the setup a little bit more. We moved Foden to the left and we played much, much better as a result. And it's the same thing as the US game, except it wasn't really a game of two halves like that. But when we play progressive, when we play open, when we try to attack teams, we look so much better. But when we play lethargic, slow, when we play to retain possession and to just sit deep, we don't even look better defensively. We just hold ourselves back. We slow our own game down and we allow ourselves to get dominated by the opposition. And this was going to be my first point because um, we need to play with a lot more belief. A lot more belief. And even if we do play progressive and get knocked out, I feel like Southgate would be looked at a lot better and the England squad would be looked at a lot better. The one thing that a lot of people despise is that we play like crap and then we don't even get a result or a good result playing like crap. We get a draw, for example. And the first half, we took the sting out of our own game. We barely created anything, really. There was... Um, a nice ball through to Rashford. He had an overhead kick as well. That was about it. That was about it. In the second half, um, we started to play with a lot more freedom. We started pushing the ball forward a lot more. It wasn't so much sideways passes and just possession for possession's sake. And we looked a lot better. Two great goals from Rashford. A great goal from Foden as well. Good blink-up play between him and Harry Kane. Much, much better performance. But we do need to play with that belief more. And that's going to be my first talking point. The second point, Harry Kane, even without scoring, he impacted the game so well. Um, he got the assist for Phil Foden's goal. Um, he put Rashford um, through on goal in the first 10, 15 minutes with a great chance. And he should have done a little bit better, but it happens sometimes in football. Not And not everyone's going to score every single chance. At least with Rashford, he took the chances when it came. And that's all you can really say about with him. But with Harry Kane, brilliant playmaking from him. I thought he had a brilliant centre-forward performance. Put the ball on a plate for Phil Foden in the second half as well. And was a constant nuisance to that Wales back line. It was a brilliant performance from him as well. Even as a Chelsea fan, you have to give, you have to give praise where it's due for good performances. Even if it does come from rival players. I'm going to be real. No Chelsea players played um, in that England-Wales game. So we ain't going to be talking about Chelsea players. But we will talk about Pulisic a little bit more towards the end of the video. So just keep a look out for that too. On to Marcus Rashford. Because we have spoken about him for a while already in the video. Brilliant performance from him. Deserved the man of the match. And all the focus will be on him after scoring those two goals. And it wasn't just about the two goals. 
It was about him being a constant threat. We spoke earlier about the chance that Kane put through to him one-on-one. -on -one. Could have done a bit better with it, but he wasn't wasteful over the full 90. Um, tried an overhead kick out of nowhere towards the end of the first half. And debatably, like, it's all about the connection with that one. But he still did well to even get into that position. And hey, if he scored, it would have been goal of the tournament, him or Richarlison. In the second half, though, everything clicked perfectly for him. Good free kick to make it 1-0 to England. And his constant persistence paid off as well with a second just before he got hooked off. Would have low-key kept him on for the, and would have seen if he could have get, got a hat-trick. But in spite of that, still a great performance from him. My man of the match. And yeah, just keep it up for the World Cup as well. Um, Moving on to my next point, Phil Foden. There's been a lot of talk about starting him over Mason Mount. And Chelsea fans aren't going to like it. But he, he showed in the second half why he should be starting. At least on the left. Because against the US, we played Mount on the left for God knows what reason. And it was terrible. And that one I'm not even going to get at Mount too much for. Because Mount shouldn't be playing wide. We've known this from all the years that we've watched Mason Mount playing well. I mean, playing at Chelsea. You play him at his best when he's playing centrally. Not when he's playing out wide. Foden, I think we tried that in the first half and it didn't work out. We pushed him further out to the wide in the second. And it was a much better performance from him. And... Um, I feel like Southgate should have already known that based off the profile of the players. But, hey, a better late than never, innit? Phil Foden had a brilliant performance in the second half, deserved the goal, and he should be playing on the left for the considerable future because Sterling hasn't even been that impressive this World Cup campaign either. So he can't really be justifying a place. Right now, it looks like it should be Foden and Rashford. But let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section below. Moving on to the final point. Senegal in the next round, which will be very, very interesting because Senegal have actually looked pretty good. Yeah, they had that loss to... Oh, I don't remember who they lost. Ne Netherlands. They had that loss to Netherlands in the first match day, but I put that down to two Mendy mistakes. Other than that, I think the whole um, Senegalese team has been very good. They've been structured well, been hard to break down. Koulibaly is looking like one of the best defenders in the tournament right now. Surprise, and this is why I keep saying as well keep your cooler barley stocks. This guy is a quality center back, he needs time to adjust to the speed of the Premier League, but he will come good. I am very, very sure of that. I wouldn't write him off this early, but it will be a tough game for England. I don't think England are going to be guaranteed to win this sort of game because of that. You might even see um, Southgate be a bit uh, what's the word defensive again in this game you might even see that happen but it is what it is it's what we come to expect with Southgate anyway but it's going to be a difficult game England are capable of winning but it all depends on how they play and I just don't think they're going to play the right way I think we're going to be lethargic and defensive again we're going to try to neutralize their attack and we should be playing on the front foot and believing in ourselves a bit more but hey that's Southgate for you it is what it is um, last point, I want to talk about Christian Pulisic, second man of the match award in a row for the US. You see what happens when this guy gets given a regular game time in his position. You see what happens. This guy has been brilliant and he's been producing consistently for them. I think he got an assist in the first game, was very unlucky not to score against England and he got another goal again against Iran. Like, if he continues his form, there is no debate now that he should be starting. And Potter, I have been so patient with him. I will continue to be patient with him. But I'm running out of patience when it comes to Pulisic. Because Pulisic needs to be given a run of games. He's playing better than Sterling's playing. Ziyech, I mean, Ziyech is having a good World Cup too. I'm not even going to say too much about him. But he don't play on the left. Pulisic plays on the left. Don't be putting Mount there. Don't put Aubameyang there. Don't put Havertz there. Pulisic has to be playing on the left. He looks so creative. He looks so much more confident for the US. Why are we not building on that? That I just don't understand. But I had to talk about Pulisic for a little bit before we wrapped up. Big up everybody that's locked in. Smash the like and subscribe button as always. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my comments down in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Carefree Lewis G and I'm out. Up the Chelsea.